Welcome to the Annual Occupancy Report, or AOR Demo. This training will walk you through how to correctly complete the AOR for your housing project or projects. If you have any further questions about something mentioned in this demo, please email hss at toronto.ca. The Annual Occupancy Report template is an Excel file. Each year, the template will be emailed to you with instructions on how to complete the report from hss at toronto.ca. It is important to use the template included in the email each year, as this will be the most updated version. Upon opening it, you will see three tabs located at the bottom on the left of the file. The tabs are titled Instructions, Rent Roll, and 2023 AOR. The title of this tab will be updated annually to reflect the appropriate reporting year. Let's begin with the Instructions tab. This page features simple instructions on how to complete the AOR, explanations of common terms you will find useful when completing the AOR, and definitions of the various options you will find when selecting from the drop-down menus. We will refer to this section for information on how to complete the other tabs. Let's continue to the Rent Roll tab. Step 1. Check rows 2 and 3 to ensure the corporation's name and address are correct. If the information is not correct, please correct it here. Step 2. The second step is to update any new information for the property as of the end of the reporting period, in this case December 31, 2023. There are four scenarios where you could have new information available. One, when all information in columns D, E, and H has been populated from the previous year. Two, when information from columns D, E, and or H is missing. Three, when there are vacant units. And four, when there is a superintendent unit. Let's explore each scenario further. In the first case, when you receive the AOR template, the template will be populated with the information you submitted in the previous year. For example, the 2023 AOR will be populated with the information you provided in 2022. You will need to review the data in columns A, B, D, E, and H. In the rare case that this information does not align with your records, please update the information and contact HSS at hss at toronto.ca to inform us of any discrepancies. Next, check that the number of units and unit types are correct in columns A and B. Let's filter column B for one bedroom apartment. First, check that the unit number and the unit type that appears next to it are correct. In this example, we are confirming that unit 102 is a one bedroom apartment. Then, Check that the total number of one-bedroom apartments is correct for this address. In this example, there are two. Continue for all unit types and correct any information that is not accurate directly into the report template. With the second case, check if any of the units have missing information in columns D, E, and or H. If so, Enter that information directly into the template. For example, Unit 104. The initial household income at move-in, located in column E, is missing. So, the first thing we need to do is complete the information in column E. Next, let's look at vacant units. If a unit remained vacant in the reporting year, in this case 2023, Put in the total rent revenue, including subsidy, if applicable for the unit in column I. If the unit is occupied, enter the actual occupancy cost at the end of the reporting year, in this case, December 31st, 2023, in column I. For example, Unit 102 was listed as vacant in December 2022. However, in 2023, it is now occupied. So I'll enter the amount of rent revenue in column I. Another example is Unit 109. Last year, it was occupied, but as of December 31st, 2023, my records show it is vacant. 
So I'll put vacant in columns D and E. I'll also enter the amount of rent revenue that would have been received in column I. Now, let's discuss what to do with a superintendent unit. You can type superintendent in column E and add or update the move-in date for that unit. If the information remains the same from the previous year, you can leave it as it is. If the superintendent pays rent for this unit, include the amount paid for the unit in the actual occupancy cost at the end of the reporting year, in this case, December 31st, 2023 section. If the superintendent does not pay rent, leave it blank. For example, we can see that Unit 107 is a superintendent unit. Since this unit pays rent, enter the amount into column I, which is the actual occupancy cost at December 31st, 2023. Step 3. Now that you've confirmed your rent rule has the correct information in place for each unit, let's complete the form by filling in columns C, F, J, and K. Column C asks about your barrier-free units. This is a change from last year. This year, barrier-free units are defined as units with wider doors and hallways for individuals using mobility devices, barrier-free paths of travel within kitchens, balconies, bedrooms, and bathrooms, bathrooms with space for people with mobility devices to turn around, with accessible fixtures such as sinks, grab bars, toilets, tubs, or showers, and accessible kitchens designed by individuals with disabilities or mobility issues can use them safely and comfortably. Wider doors and hallways for mobility devices. If any of your units meet the specified criteria, indicate yes in column C. Otherwise, indicate no using the drop down menu for each unit number. Column F contains a subsidy source. In the reference, each of the drop-down options is explained in detail. Using these definitions, select the appropriate subsidy source for each unit. For columns J and K, the drop-down options are not defined in the reference. To find information on your housing provider's dedicated mandated units and referral pathway, refer to your access plan, contribution agreement, or rent supplement agreement. If the unit does not have dedicated mandated units as per one of these documents, select NA in column J. If none of the options in the drop-down menu apply to a unit in column K, enter referral agreement. Step four. The last two columns to be completed are columns G and I. This information comes directly from your records. Directions for completing the utility allowance and actual occupancy costs for the year are in the instructions tab. The rent roll is now complete. Now we'll finish with the 2023 AOR tab. This tab is designed to automatically populate calculations in sections B, C, and D. This information is based on the data you entered on the rent roll. Like the rent roll, the first step for this tab is to check that the project information in Section A is correct. Secondly, verify that the total number of units in column B by unit type is correct. In this example, we have three bachelor slash studios, two one bedrooms, four two bedrooms, and one three bedroom apartment for a total of 10 units. Verify that the total at the bottom of the table is correct. Additional step. In the case you are a housing provider that has multiple housing projects, the AOR template will have additional rent roll and AOR tabs for each address you are required to report on. Once you are finished with the first couple of tabs, continue with the rent roll tab for your other address or addresses and repeat all the steps described previously. Once your AOR is complete, please submit your completed AOR in Excel format to hss at toronto.ca. Our staff will contact you if there are any questions or revisions required. For additional support, please contact hss at toronto.ca.